This video gives an introduction to the definition and use of matrices with MATLAB. So the previous video introduced the vector array notation, but more generally, MATLAB treats every variable as a matrix, not as a vector, and thus with two dimensions rather than one. So this resource is going to give a quick introduction into how MATLAB handles matrices and what matrix operations it supports. We should emphasize this is an introduction. The aim is we're looking at beginners. Now, you should note that MATLAB will handle higher dimensional matrices. That's higher than two dimension, but that's not a topic that's appropriate for an introductory resource. So defining a matrix, matrices are entered using the same notation as vectors. So if you looked at the previous resource on vectors, this will make sense to you. What you do is use commas to separate columns and semicolons to separate rows. And with an example, hopefully this will be obvious. So here we've got two examples. We'll start with the first example, which I've circled in red here, which is A. And what you'll notice is we've got commas between the 1, 2, and 3. So the commas say, go to a new column. So you see we've got 1 on the top row, and then comma says, go to the next column. So we've got 2, comma says, go to the next column. So we've got 3. And then what you'll notice in between is we have a semicolon. And the semicolon says, move to a new row. And so the new row starts with 4, comma to go to the next column, 5, comma to go to the next column, 6. So you can see that notation has given us a matrix comprised of two rows and three columns. Now, if we look at B, you'll see we've got exactly the same sort of syntax. You'll notice we've got commas here, 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 and here. So the commas are used to tell you move to a new column. But we've also got semicolons here, 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 and here. And the semicolons tell you move to a new row. So if we go back to the beginning, you'll see we've got minus 2, comma 4. That's the top row. Semicolon, move to the next row. And the next row, we've got 0, comma 1. Semicolon, move to the next row, and we get 7, 8. So there's the next row, and so on. So you can see how the syntax works. Commas to separate columns, and semicolons to tell you, right, now I'm going to start a new row. So here, clearly, A is 2 by 3, and B is 5 by 2. Errors, then. If anything other than small matrices, and this is a key point, entry by hand, is rather tedious and prone to error, because each row and column must have the correct number of terms, otherwise the command will fail. So here's an example of a command which has failed. So there's the command. You can see I've put C equals 1 space 2 space 3, and you remember spaces are interpreted like commas. So that's given me three columns on the top row. So essentially, I've said 1, 2, 3 is the top row. And then I've gone the semicolon, and I've done the next row. And the next row, I've gone 4, 5, 6, 7. Well, you can see what the problem is. These two are not the same length. I've tried to define a matrix with the top row having three terms and the second row having four terms. And clearly, these are not consistent. And you can see the error message that MATLAB's told you. You've given an inconsistent expression. So inconsistent data, so an error has occurred. How about building matrices indirectly? Because to build large matrices by hand would be very difficult. Well, you can build matrix coefficients slowly and gradually by adding specific values or blocks. But just, of course, make sure that every command you do is dimensionally consistent. So here's an example. I've got rid of D, and then I've said, right, I'm going to take the term here, D, 3, 2, equals 4. So that says take the third row and the second column of D and make it 4. And this is the output. And what do you notice? You've got the 4 exactly where you expect it. OK? But you've got zeros everywhere else because you haven't defined the other coefficients. And then with my second command, 
I've said d2 comma 1 equals minus 3. And what you notice is put a value into the 2, 1 position. So here I'm building the matrix a bit at a time. Where I know a value, I can stick it in. And the key point is that MATLAB will automatically fill all the unknown coefficients with zero. I don't have to predefine how big the matrix is. MATLAB will automatically fill any rows and columns it thinks it needs with zeros. How do you access matrix values? Well, this is probably obvious from the previous slide. The value in the ith row and the jth column is accessed with the notation x, and you'll see it's round brackets i, comma, j. So we've got an example here. You'll see I've produced a random matrix here with five rows and four columns. And then what's this command x2, comma, 4 going to do? Well, we hope it will take the second row and the fourth column. And lo and behold, if you look at the second row and the fourth column, that's the value that you've got. So you'll see, second row, fourth column, that's the value that's been extracted. What if I do something like x5, comma, 1? Well, I'm expecting the fifth row and the first column, which is down here. And lo and behold, if you take that value, that's the value that you've got. So hopefully the notation here is obvious. What happens if you want to access a whole column? Well, the key thing here is that MATLAB has a shortcut to extract the entire column of a matrix. And the shortcut is this one here. Essentially, you use this colon operator. So if you put colon in lieu of the row position, this is interpreted by MATLAB as I want all the rows. So if you look at this command here, you'll see I've put x colon comma 3. So the colon first says all rows, and then the 3 next says third column. So that's how it's interpreted. Whatever you put before the comma tells MATLAB about the rows. Whatever you put after the comma tells MATLAB about the columns. So what do you notice? We've got the whole of the third column. And perhaps should emphasize, if you look here, you'll see that those two are the same. What happens if I want to get the last column? Well, you'll remember in the previous video that MATLAB has this short hand called end, which tells you I'm taking the last of something. So if we look at the command down here, where we've said x colon comma end, that will be interpreted as all rows and last column. So there's the last column. And what do you notice? Oh, sorry, I've gone too fast. And if you go down here, you'll notice it's extracted the last column. What about accessing a whole row? Well, you'll not be surprised that the same notation works. In essence, we use this colon operator in lieu of the column position. So if I write something like x2, comma, colon, that is interpreted as take the second row and all columns. So if we look here, where's the second row? There it is. And if you look, you'll see that we've extracted all those values. What happens if I want to extract the last two rows? So there they are. There's the last two rows. Well, you will be surprised to hear that you can use this end notation. So you see I've said end minus one, penultimate row, and end last row. And then I put comma colon to say take all the columns. And lo and behold, what have you got here matches what we have there. How about extracting parts of matrices? An example of selecting given rows and columns. So I don't want the whole row and the whole column, but I want more than one row and more than one column. Well, here's an example where we're going to want the second and fourth rows and the fourth and first columns. And hopefully you'll look at the notation and you say, well, this is rather obvious. So here's the answer. I use this command here. So you notice it says take the second and the fourth rows. And then here it says take the fourth followed by the first column. So that's how the notation works. Before the comma, which rows do I want? After the comma, which columns do I want? So what's that going to give me? Well, 
The second row is giving me these values, 0 0.4854, 0 0.9058. So where have they appeared? Well, there's the 0.854, and you'll see that's the fourth column. And that's what we wanted. You see, we wanted the fourth column. If you look over here, we wanted the fourth column first and the first column next. So next, we get the first column. 0.9058. So both of those are on the second row as expected. Fourth column first, first column next. And then we asked for the fourth row. So lo and behold, you'll see the two values we get. First of all, we get the fourth column, and then we get the first column. Matrix operations then. The main thing to note is that the default variable in MATLAB is a matrix, or a vector if, if the row or column dimension is one. So any BODMAS type of operation that's valid with matrices can be carried out with the same syntax. Now we're not going to cover it here, but you might also like to know that MATLAB includes a large number of matrix analysis tools that you might find useful. So things like inverter matrix, eigenvalues, singular value decomposition, condition number, norm, and so on. So addition and subtraction. And the key point here is it's exactly as on a piece of paper. So here I've defined a matrix A, I've defined a matrix B, and then I've said, what happens if I do A plus B? Well, you can check, and you can see it's just added them together, same as you would on a piece of paper. What happens if I wanted to do A minus 3 times B? And again, you can check, but you can see it's added them exactly as on a piece of paper. What about multiplication? Well, just a quick reminder of how you multiply matrices. If I write C equals A times B, then you'll know that first of all, we have to check that the matrices A and B are dimensionally compatible. And what that means is the columns of A must be the same as the number of rows of B. If that's not true, the matrices cannot multiply. So first, you must do that check. If that check fails, MATLAB won't be able to multiply them because multiplication is not defined. Next, you will find that in terms of the result, the number of columns in C, which is the result, is the same as the number of columns of B, and the number of rows of A will match the number of rows of C. So here's an example. You'll see I've generated an F matrix, which is 3 by 3, and a G matrix, which is 3 by 2. So if I multi if multiply or write F times G, that's going to be dimensionally compatible because F has got three columns and G has got three rows. So I can write F times G, and you can check it by hand if you want, and you see MATLAB has just given you the result exactly as on a piece of paper. However, what if the dimensions were not compatible? So here, you see what I've tried to do is G times F. Now this is going to give a problem, because you'll see G has got two columns, and F has got three rows. So those two dimensions are not compatible. So I cannot do G times F. And lo and behold, what error message does MATLAB give you? It tells you the dimensions do not agree. So this uh, multiplication is not defined. So generally, then, a summary. You can do addition and subtraction exactly as on a piece of paper. Multiplication exactly as on a piece of paper. Powers, you can actually do powers. You can write things like A um, with this symbol here, and that gives you A to the power 3. I'm not going to cover it now, but you might want to investigate what happens if you put this little dot in and do A dot to the power 3. What does MATLAB do? And it doesn't do the power. It has a special functionality. And matrix inversion, you can use commands like this. So next, let's do a few live demonstrations just so you can see this happening. So if I open up my MATLAB command window, and then here's the file that I prepared, MATLAB Basics 3B, and this basically goes through the same commands as in the show. So I can create A using the commas and the semicolons, create B using the commas and the semicolons, and here is an example of a command where it fails. So you can see this is the example where I had three on the top row, four on the next row, and MATLAB gives me an error and tells me what I've done wrong. So what I could do is I could say, oh, I can see what's wrong. Let me just go and correct that. I needed an extra term on the bottom row. Let's make it a 5. And now it works. 
OK. What about creating D one element at a time? So here you see I've just put in the 4 and it's created it. Now I've put in a 3 in the 2 1 position and it's created it. But what if I do something like this? OK. I made that, I did that one wrong. I do apologize. What I want to do is um, create one with an error. So what I'm going to do is make that have three terms and now you'll see it gives an error because I've said create the third row of D first and second columns and yet I've given a three dimensional row so that one will not work because the dimensions do not match and it tells me what the problem is I've got a dimension of two on the left hand side but a one by three vector on the right hand side Okay, extracting individual elements, so I can put my X in there, and you can see second um, row, fourth column, I extract with 2, 4, fifth row, first column, I extract with 5, 1. Extracting whole columns, here I can extract a whole column, and you'll see I've set the third column there, and if you look up and see what's the third column, and you'll see, yes, it's done the job. If I want the last column, I just use this end. What about extracting whole rows? Well, here we'll do a new X, and you can see this one says, take the second row, and if you look, you'll see indeed it's given you the second row. This one, the penultimate two rows, and you'll see using end minus one and end comma colon, it's given me the penultimate two rows. What if I do a command like this, X six comma two? And what does it say? Index exceeds matrix dimensions, because if you look at X, it does not have a sixth row, so x6, 2 does not exist. And again, MATLAB gives you a very useful error message. It tells you what you've done wrong. You're putting an index, which is too big. OK, extracting blocks. So again, if we start a new x, there's a new x, and I use a command like this. And what's it done? It said take the third row and then the second row and take them in the order of fourth column, first column, third column. And I'll let you check and by pausing the video that that's done what you expect. Bod mass, so I can define A, B and C here. There you are, an A, B and C matrix. I can do addition, A plus B. You can check that's worked slowly. A minus 3B, so that's subtraction and multiplication together. You can check it's worked. But what if I do this one, A plus C? What do you notice? It's failed. Why is it failed? Well, if I look at the workspace temporarily and look at A, you'll see that A, oh, it's, um, it's difficult to tell that one. I think I'll do it this way. Let's do it this way. Who's A and C? And what do you notice? A is 2 by 2 and C is 1 by 2. They have different dimensions. And you will know from mathematics, you can't add matrices with different dimensions, and MATLAB's told you that. Look at the error message. Matrix dimensions must agree, and that's why it's failed. All right, next, if we move to multiplication, so we've got F and G, and you'll see I can do F times G, and that works fine, but if I do try and do G times F, again, I get the error matrix message, and again, MATLAB's helping you. It's saying, this is what you've done wrong. Have a look at what you've entered, and you should be able to work out the problem. So some conclusions. We've demonstrated the matrix notation in MATLAB. The syntax is the same as for matrices in normal mathematics, the row index and then the column index, where you count from the top left corner. It's easy to extract specific values, rows, columns and blocks as required, and we've given a number of demonstrations. And MATLAB supports normal mathematical operations for matrices with normal syntax. And a final point, you're recommended to finish commands with a semicolon once your matrices get large because this will prevent flooding the command window with the data output.